So can you still like store carbohydrates in your muscle while you're on keto? Like, can you still store muscle glycogen? Can you still eat carbs and have them store properly? Or does it just kick you out of keto and go straight to fat? How does it work? Well, believe it or not, on keto, your body is efficient at storing carbs. You actually do even better at storing carbs on keto than you do not on keto. Hey, please do hit that red subscribe button and please hit that bell icon. And after this video, check out 4505 Pork Rinds. All right, they are the pork rind company that I talk about all the time whenever I'm doing grocery hauls, the best tasting pork rinds, stuff like that. I'm always pointing them out. Finally, I was able to secure a little bit of a discount for the people that watch my videos. So thanks to 4505 for the support. There's now a link that you can use down below and you can use the code 20 crumbles, two zero crumbles, and take 20% off the rind and cracklin crumble combo. Okay, so that's gonna be on Amazon. It's a mix of pork rinds and pork cracklins. So super, super good keto snack. So check them out, link down below to take you to Amazon and then just use the code 20 crumbles so you can save 20% off and get them delivered to your doorstep. Super awesome. Thank you 4505, because you guys rock. So yes, on keto, we store carbohydrates rather effectively. But we're gonna dive into whether that actually matters in this video. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how the science works. And I'm also going to tell you a way that you can start increasing the amount of carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles so that you can, well, have more potential energy stored up, but also just kind of fill your muscles out a little bit more so you maybe look a little bit more full even while you're on a keto diet. All right, so the Journal of Metabolism had published a study that found that when people were on the ketogenic diet for 20 months, they had equal amounts of glycogen stored as people that were not on keto. What? They're not even eating carbs. How are they storing carbs? Because the body still finds a way to allocate resources to make sure that we have carbs stored. Because we will always need carbs for our energy. We will always need carbs for our brain. We will always need carbs for certain cellular functions within the body. So the body will always do what it can to make sure we have a preservation of that. Okay, what's funny is this study found that when subjects uh, that were on a ketogenic diet versus subjects that were on a carb diet went for a 180 minute run, they both depleted the same amount of glycogen. How is that possible that a carb burner uses the same amount of carbs from their muscles as a fat burner? Because the bodies become more efficient at using what they're good at. Okay, so even though the person that is eating carbohydrates is burning a lot of carbohydrates, they're recycling them and restoring them pretty quick. The person that's doing keto is using more fats and isn't having to restore as many as quickly. So they stay the same, okay? What's even more wild is after the workout, after they refeed, the ketogenic person eats their keto diet, the carb person eats their carb diet, and after 120 minutes after the workout, they restored their glycogen levels the same. Our bodies on a keto diet know how to store carbohydrates from other energy substrates and it still gets stored as glycogen. What's wild is compare that to a study that was published in the journal Sports Medicine that kind of said the uh, contrary, right? Or I shouldn't say that, but it implied that keto kills performance. It said after four days of a ketogenic diet, subjects lost 15% of their anaerobic performance. So that leads us to believe that, well, the only reason you would lose performance that fast is if you were draining muscle glycogen and you just couldn't use your muscle glycogen. And that makes sense. And it led me to believe that too, except when you look at another study, this one published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, it took a look at subjects that did a keto diet for six days, except with this structure, they had a carb refeed on the last day. They had carbs. Well, guess what? Their performance still dropped. They went keto, had carbs, but their performance was still low. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that it has nothing to do with the glycogen after all. It's not the glycogen that's the problem. You see, when we are in ketosis, ketones themselves, the presence of very ketones, they inhibit anaerobic glycolysis in and of themselves. And they inhibit anaerobic glycolysis in an effort to preserve glucose. So basically the ketones are stopping glycolysis from happening. It's not that we're losing muscle glycogen. What's kind of funny is I've noticed anecdotally, if I have one carbohydrate meal, like a cheat meal or something, I don't get an abundant amount of strength from that meal. I don't feel it. But if I come off of keto for two or three days, then I start to feel a strength increase a little bit. And that has to do with the fact that, well, after one meal, I'm probably back in ketosis really quick. So the ketones are there stopping glycolysis again. But after two, sometimes three days of eating carbs, 
ketones are long gone, okay? They're out of the equation, so my body's actually able to use glycolysis again. That just explains things. So if you're truly trying to increase some power, you might want to actually come off keto for a couple days before an event, not just one meal, because you'll get right back in keto the second that you're actually working hard. So in that case, does glycogen even matter? Like, what's the deal? Does it even really matter that much? Well, it's funny because the same study that took a look at uh, glycogen being depleted and remaining the same, well, that discovered that people that are on keto use fat for energy at a higher intensity, meaning they need less glycogen to begin with. So think of it like this. You have a hybrid car, okay? This hybrid car is mainly running, in this case, on gasoline. Okay, it starts to go up a little hill and the gasoline needs a little help. So the electric motor kicks in to give it an extra push up the hill. Okay, well, that's kind of how we are on keto, right? We're running on fats, but then when we need a little bit of intensity, we have a little bit of carbs that come in and give us some extra boost. Okay, well, it turns out that if you're on keto for a while, you don't need the assistance of the carbohydrates until you're much further along. So the analogy would be that same hybrid car driving along one hybrid car starts to get to a 5% incline and needs the help of glucose. Another hybrid car gets to a 30% incline and then needs the help of glucose. In other words, you are much more efficient at burning fat at a high intensity than someone that is burning carbs. So glycogen is less important for you. However, it still plays a role as your preserved storage form of glycogen. So with that being said, how do you fill your muscles up? How do you fill up glycogen? Because that is a common concern with people that are in the fitness world is they say, well, I feel like my muscles aren't full like when I eat carbs. Well, you can do that. What you have to do is you have to drive up gluconeogenesis. You see, gluconeogenesis is where the liver creates glucose from proteins and from other substrates. And we need to drive that process up because what that's gonna do is that's gonna create more carbohydrates in our blood that aren't necessarily kicking out of us out of keto, but it will store in the muscles as glycogen to fill us up a little bit more, possibly get a better muscle pump and get a little bit more out of that. Now, the way that you do that is by increasing the amino acid alanine, okay? Because alanine is the main carbon donor that is needed for hepatic gluconeogenesis. So what that means is without alanine, we can't really go through gluconeogenesis properly and convert proteins, convert uh, fatty acid backbones like glycerol into the glucose that we need. So how do you get that? Well, the best sources are going to be haddock, mackerel, and beef. I don't see you diving into a bucket of haddock anytime soon, and you're probably not a total weirdo like me that enjoys mackerel, so you're probably gonna lean towards the beef, but I will tell you the haddock and the mackerel are the better sources. But beef is going to be a rich source of alanine. You can also take an alanine supplement that is going to help you out with that too. The point is, is that is going to help at least drive up the potential for you to store more carbohydrates, but you have to ask yourself the question, if you really need it. Do you really need to store more glycogen if it's not mattering to you much? If you are someone that is training at a higher intensity, like over 70% at a very high intensity, you might get a benefit out of storing as much glycogen as you can and then having carbs for a couple of days so you rebuild that framework so you can actually use those carbs and access them more via that glycolytic pathway. I know this is a little bit complicated, but as always, keep it locked in with my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.